kilogram mass is held aloft by two rods and a horizontal cable. Find the loads in the rods and the cable. The first thing you want to deal with is finding out what your points are. So we've got four points of interest, A, B, C, and D. A is at the origin. That one's fairly easy. That would be just 0, 0, 0. Point B lies along the y-axis, so you've got 0, 4, 0. Point C is in the negative x direction, minus 3, at 5 in the y direction and 2 in the z direction. And point D acts at 1, 2, 2. Any equilibrium problem you need has to have a free body diagram. So if we identify for C, that's the one from the cable, which acts from point D to C, because a cable has to pull. Now, if you think about this for a minute, this is my free body diagram of point D. I know that I'm going to have the cable, and I'm going to have the weight, which is acting in the minus K direction. But I'm also going to have these two rods. You can, if you wish, assume that they act entirely outside of the, all, all away from your point, if you want, or you can think about this, that cable is going to be pulling back against point D because cables have to be in tension. That pretty much means that both of these rods have to be pushing up on point D. Again, that's an optional thing. You can either notice that those have to be pushing up so that they go from A to D, or you could do it the other way around. If you do it the other way around, you'll get negative signs at the end, but it won't make any difference as you solve. Once you've got your free body diagram and your points, now you can start finding some position vectors. These are all magnitude along the line. So we're going to do all position vector, unit vector, multiply vector operations. So A to D goes from A to D. 2 minus from lets me take 1 minus 0, gives me I plus 2J plus 2K. From B to D says I have I minus 2J plus 2K. From C to D gives me minus 4i, because it's minus 3 minus 1, plus 3j, and then I don't have anything in the k direction. My w is not magnitude along a line. It's a magnitude in a known direction. The weight's going to act down. So we know that we're going to have this 50 kilogram mass, and it's going to be in the minus k direction. 50 kilogram, hint, 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 kilogram mass. I need a force, so I have to multiply by 9.81. Once you've got these, you can take the magnitude of those position vectors to find the unit vector. In each of these cases, this is the square root of the components squared, and the square root of 1 squared plus 2 squared plus 2 squared is 3. The square root of 1 squared plus 2 squared plus 2 squared, which is the same thing because the negative squares itself into a positive number, is also 3. And dc is 4 squared plus 3 squared, which is a nice 3, 4, 5 right triangle. Once you have the position vectors and the magnitudes, you can write a unit vector by dividing the position vector by its magnitude. And the unit vector in the C direction does not have a K component, which is good because we were told that this was a horizontal cable. So each of these vectors is going to be an unknown magnitude times the unit vector along its direction. And W is minus 490.5K. Some of the forces in the x direction has to be equal to zero. That gives me one-third A plus one-third B minus four-fifths of C equals zero. Those are the x components of each of my vectors. Now I'm going to look at the y components of each of my vectors. This looks almost the same except the B vector is pulling in the negative J direction, or rather pushing in the negative J direction. And the sum of the forces in Z equals zero gives me two-thirds A plus two-thirds B, and you must not forget the weight. Otherwise, you have a system where everything is equal to zero, and all of your loads end up being equal to zero. Once you have your system of equations you can solve, in this case, the easiest way is to start with the sum of the forces in the z direction, because this just gives me two-thirds of A plus B is 490.5. Or in this case, A plus B is 735.75. Now, why did I do that? I did that because the sum of the forces in the x direction is also essentially A plus B times one-third. Now, this is equal to four-fifths of C. If I substitute the 735.75 back in there, multiply by a third, I get C is 306.56 newtons. Notice that I'm keeping five significant digits all the way through here. That's important 
I will round only at the end. Once I have C, I can go now to the sum of the forces in the y direction. I get two-thirds A minus B is minus three-fifths of C. Substitute that in, I get minus 183.94. Or, in this case, A minus B is 275.91. Once I have A plus B is 735.75, and A minus B is 275.91, I can add these two up, and I get 2A is 1011, or A in this case is 505.83. Substitute that back into either one of them, and you get B is 229.92. Remember that as we did this, we assumed that the rod was pressing from the origin up to B. So the rod on the left gives us 506 newtons in compression. The rod on the other side gives us 230, and I want a decimal there to make it three sig figs in compression. And the cable is 736 newtons in tension, which is good, because ropes can't push.